Okay, so now that we have an idea of what phrasing is, and, and we practice phrasing with our students all the time, whenever we read something, uh, whether we mark the text or not, we, we, we sort of read it in, in, uh, in, in phrases, in meaningful phrases. So we will uh, reading words in phrases, not one at a time. So we, we, we constantly practice this as we speak and as we read a text, as we do some type of read aloud. And, and all this is, is when we phrase and we, and we either swoop the words or we, we highlight the swoop as we do it, it helps students um, build that proper speed, accuracy, and expression so that it's not, uh, it's not choppy and, and the words are being strung together as you would if you were talking to someone, okay? So, so it's matching that proper, um, ex, uh, proper fluidity and expression where there's no, there's no breaks and pauses in the words. I'm not reading it like reading words in phrases. And, you know, beginner readers, they often, they read one word at a time, right? And, and that can be very choppy. So the, what the phrasing is doing is, is it's smoothing it out, um, getting it to that proper speed, inflection, intonation, okay? As well as accuracy, okay? So let's take this scenario of phrasing. We know now that this is an idea that's associated with fluency. Let's, uh, lo let's look at this scenario. I want you to take two minutes and I want you to read it to yourself. Go ahead now. If you haven't, pause me. Now unpause. I'm going to read it. It says here, uh, by, I like how these scenarios are getting more and more detailed, meaning that you could, you could see this in a classroom maybe. So this is happening uh, by halfway through the school year. All right, so we're talking, I don't know, uh, January, let's say. A majority of students in the class are making good progress reading poems with fluency. So this is connected back to that last scenario that we did with the first graders, right? So the first graders, they're, they're reading some poems and now we're, in, we're, now we're halfway in the year and they've been reading, keep on reading poems and practicing that poetry work. So we already know we're in the fluency zone, okay? Um, a majority of the students in the class are making good progress, uh, reading poems with fluency. That's great. However, so now we get to a, a specific subset. However, a handful of students still read the poems uh, haltingly. Let's circle that. Haltingly. That's a great word. Haltingly. You don't see that often. They're reading it choppy. They're reading it one word at a time, sometimes at, at points word by word and ignoring punctuation. Which of the following explicit evidence-based strategies would be best uh, trans uh, would best transition the students away from word by word reading during the daily uh, daily poetry activities? So we're trying to get away from that choppiness, that, that one word at a time reading of the poetry. All right, so what should it be? What, what, could, what could we do for this, first, this group of first graders? Uh, is it uh, A? Shift the students from poetry to a broad range of narrative and informational texts. Why? <laughs> I mean, the poetry is supposed to be the easier option. We're using poetry to help with fluency because it's the linguistic complexity is more manageable. And, and going to a narrative or informational text might even make it harder, right? Okay, how about this one right here? B. Uh, establish weekly poetry performance, uh, est establishing a weekly poetry performance to motivate students to, uh, to read with more expression. Um, I think weekly poetry performances are wonderful, um, but I don't think that's for every student, right? And, and that might not help out the students that are really struggling as, as much as you think, unless, that, unless that's something that they really enjoy. I mean, it sounds like right now that they might start to hate this activity um, if they don't get help soon. So I don't know if this is the way. Uh, what's the, and, and I don't think this is a research-based way either. Uh, so we're going to cross this one out, even though I think it could be really fun. But it doesn't matter what I think. You're, we're trying to narrow it down to that answer that's going to fit with these exams. And uh, so I'm going to cross out uh, going to these texts and doing the weekly performances. Let's go to C. Building the student's background knowledge is this a schema thing with respect to each poem's theme and literary device. 
Is it going to be a, is it a scheme of thing? Is it that they're not understanding what's going on? Probably not. And that's really more of a comprehension thing, not a fluency thing. Okay. Adding, and let's circle the key, adding phrase cues to the Stuart's poetry book and modeling how to read aloud in phrases. You know, this is the scenario they give. How could you help them if they're still being very choppy? And you need to, you need to remember that phrasing is a way to help a student deal with choppiness as they read. And if you can remember that, then on the day of the test, if you ever had this and you saw phrasing and you, in the back of your mind, you're like phrasing helps with fluency. It eliminates the choppiness. Then I think that would that would solve this this one and get you the answer, because this is all about it being haltingly word by word, word by word. And and the phrasing is a strategy that's used to help students with fluency and move away from speaking word by word. OK, and get rid of that choppiness. All right, so team, these questions are getting more detailed. Um, your job is to become familiar with uh, with these scenarios, right? So if you see this scenario, right, word by word, word by word, you know it's about fluency, right? In your mind, you're like, you already have in your mind, I'm looking for my friend here who helps with fluency and phrasing. Because if, if you spot the scenario, then you should be looking for your friend. Yeah? Does that make sense, team? I hope so. Okay. All right. This is a great question. Great scenario. And it, it's the answer is D. It's from this test. And, and I think um, you're getting exposure to this strategy of phrasing. Okay. A, a phrase cue, uh, cues are basically that's uh, the teacher putting in these, these uh, lines here. So they're marking off the phrases. We do this if you've ever done Shakespeare before. And you've you've gone and you've done phrasing. You do this all the time. You you put phrases and images and ideas together, and it helps string the language together so it doesn't uh, the language isn't choppy and chunky. So these lines here are these uh, adding uh, phrase cues. That's what these lines are. It helps uh, smooth out the language. Okay. All right. The answer here is uh, is D. Let's continue.